Welcome Franklin County residents and thank you for tuning in to the candidate forum for Franklin County Jailer Democratic primary election held on May 17th, 2022. I'm JC Young and I'm honored to serve on the Chamber of Governmental Affairs Committee and the MC for this event tonight. As you all know, the Office of Jailer is a constitutional office in Kentucky. It comes with great responsibility. Statute mandates that county fiscal courts provide for the incarceration of prisoners arrested in the county sentenced or held by court order. The Office of County Jailer and maintaining the county jail has become a very challenging task. The county jailer must provide for the well-being, health, safety of all inmates and staff. They're tasked with record keeping, budgets, canteen accounts, hiring, firing, training of jail personnel, security operations, all while dealing with the families in custody. It's a position, in my opinion, that doesn't receive enough gratitude from citizens. And as a resident of Franklin County, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank both of you for seeking this office. In this forum, we're honored to have Mr. Jake Bonna, Ms. Tracy Hopper. Before we begin, I'd like to thank and recognize the Frankfurt Area Chamber of Commerce, the Frankfurt Plant Board, and our historic newspaper, The State Journal. Serving as our esteemed panelists and moderators, and those that are doing the real work this, this evening, our Frankfurt Area Chamber of Commerce President, CEO, Tish Shade, Editor of the State Journal, Chanda Vino, and Chair of the Chamber Governmental Relations and Affairs Committee and Frankfurt Plant Board Communications Director, Kathy Lindsay. Candidates, you have two minutes for opening remarks, one minute responses to questions with 30 second follow-ups if asked by the panelists. We have a timekeeper, and I would ask the candidates to be respectful of that process and pay attention to the time allowed. We had a draw prior to the forum and opening remarks will begin with Ms. Hopper. Thank you. I am Tracy Hopper. Throughout my campaign, I have expressed my desire to um, run for this office. I've expressed my desire to work for the citizens of Franklin County. It's time that the jail find its way back to the table when it comes to um, community involvement and drug addiction, mental health issues. These are things that um, are very important to me. I currently work at Bondart Middle School, so I see the effects that this has on children the uh, incarceration, um, the drug effects, the mental health issues. Some of these children are living with family members. We have a, <clears throat> a duty and a responsibility to the citizens of Franklin County to do the best that we can do. We need to be at the table in a collaboration. I've said that from the beginning. This is an intentional collaboration to meet with other law enforcement agencies, the judges, the um, prosecutors and attorneys. These things are very, very important. We also need to be working with the families. You know, this has to go on beyond um, their release. Working with um, the family members, is very, very important. I, I really and truly believe that um, we, as the Franklin County Regional Jail, owe it to the family members and to Franklin County to um, bring to the table more, more input to the, uh, to the drug addiction and the mental health issues. Mr. Bonner, opening remarks. Thank Two you. Minutes. First of all, thank you all for having us here tonight all three entities. I appreciate it very much. I'm Jake Bonna. I'm 47 years old. I am your Franklin County Jailer. I have been for almost three years now. I started my career in this jail 21 years ago in 2001, and I started at the bottom and worked my way up. I left the jail in 2007 and went to the Sheriff's Office, and I did the same exact thing. I started at the bottom and worked my way up. Every position I've ever held, I've earned, and I work hard to make sure that that it gets done properly. It's been a crazy couple years at the jail. COVID has, has absolutely changed the way that we did business for a couple years. We are finally getting back to some type of normalcy and I'm striving every day, I say I, my team is striving every day to get us back to some type of normal. Our activities are started back up, our visitations have started back up, our community programs are started back up almost to a full swing and I'll say this about the community program. 
my staff did most of those community programs during COVID, so it technically never stopped. And that's how committed our staff is. Staffing is an issue at the jail. It always has been. And we're trying to find ways each and every day to tackle that and hire more people and hire more qualified people. We have some challenges ahead of us. And as Ms. Hopper said, mental health and drug addiction is something we battle on a daily basis. Each and every day we battle it. We're gonna continue to battle those and work to get better every day. We never sit there and think we know everything. We always try to get better. We're gonna enhance the training and we're gonna keep striving to get better each and every day. Thank you all for your time here tonight. Thank you for your opening statements. Our first question comes from Chanda Vino from the State Journal. For those who may not know, share with us what responsibilities the jailer has and what does the title jailer mean to you? Uh, we're gonna start with you, Mr. Bono. Great question, Ms. Vino, thank you. Um, we've heard it numerous times and I'm gonna tell you that answer changes day by day. Most of all, the safety and care of the inmates and the staff is priority number one. Budget is a top tier two. We're always working to save money. During COVID, our revenue went down some, but our spending went down some too. We've been physically responsible with our money and how we spend it up there. And we're gonna continue to do that. Working with the other agencies, I've just formed a new task force. Actually, our meeting is far, our first real meeting is this week, um, which I've invited you to. Um, working with other agencies is vital, and it's this task force vital, so I know what we're dealing with outside before it comes in our back door. Dealing with the courts is vital, but most importantly, I think the leadership at the jail is vital. Somebody there that has the experience and can handle things when they go bad. Things are gonna go bad sometimes in a jail. The experience will pay off when that happens. Ms. Hopper, one minute. Yes, um, care, custody, and control public safety. Those are the, the three main things that we deal with. And when we say care, that's a very broad, broad spectrum. Care is not just uh, bringing pay people in and making sure that they have a uniform and a mat. Care goes well beyond a uniform and a mat. We have to make sure that we're meeting their needs medically. We have to make sure that we're, needing, we're meeting their needs throughout the community. Um, where state inmates come in, we, we need to make sure that we have the programs needed to continue to run these state programs. They're not coming to our jail right now because we don't have the programs. They, um, our, the population for the class D felon inmate, class D uh, inmates is down. We, we have to, um, we have to uh, make sure that uh, safety, care, custody is, are the out front, the main points that we have. Ms. Lindsay? Yes, I have a simple question. Um, what differentiates you from your opponent? We'll start with you, Ms. Hopper. The difference um, in my um, experience, I worked <coughs> at the jail, I've also worked in pretrial services, I've worked on the probation side, and um, I worked in records, research and statistics, my experience is different. I'm not a law enforcement officer. I've never been a law enforcement officer. So I feel like my view of the jail and the care, custody, and control is totally different from the view of a law enforcement officer. That's what I feel like sets me aside differently. <clears throat> my passion and desire to run for this office and hold this office has never wavered. I've never once wavered in my desire to be the jailer of Franklin County. This is not the first time I've ran for this office. Um, this office was, I don't ever expect this office to be handed to me at any point in time if our jailer does not uh, fulfill her his, full, his four year term. Mr. Bond? Plain and simple experience. I've had 21 years of continued service in this community whether at the jail or the sheriff's office. My opponent worked at the jail from 1989 to 1994, 20-some five years ago. The jail has changed tremendously since this week. The jail, when I came back to the jail after being gone to, to the sheriff's office for 13 years, it was completely different than it was when I started 20 years ago. 
experience boots on the ground is is extremely important my opponent says she has 20 years experience in the paper she's ran three times and it's the first time i've seen that i can find five years of experience on paper so i'll add ethics in there too next question from what is the biggest issue facing the Franklin County Regional Jail right now, and how do you propose to address it? We'll start with Mr. Bob. There's always issues at the jail. It's a challenge each and every day, and it, could, it can vary day by day. The challenge right now is drugs. Um, it is enormously important that we keep battling drugs. My staff battles each and every day, and we win most battles. The difference now that the public doesn't understand sometimes is when I started at the jail 21 years ago and when I was a narcotics detective a few years ago, we were battling ounces and grams, which is this big to this big. Now we're battling milligrams to find. It's like finding a needle in a haystack. And we work tirelessly to prevent that. But we're not perfect. Nobody is. I hope that answered your questions. Ms. Shade, would you repeat that question? Sure. What is the biggest issue facing the Franklin County Regional Jail right now, and how do you propose to address <clears throat> it? I believe uh, that drugs are the biggest issue that we're having out there right now, and having trained staff to recognize that. We um, have we recently had a death in the jail. We had someone. Um, reportedly other overdoses in the jail. Even though I've been gone from the jail, I still have this experience to know that the things that are going on at the jail through my work at pretrial services would put me in the jail every day when I work there, no matter how long I've been gone. The biggest thing that we need to tackle is the drug issue. You have, um, when, when that death occurred, you had two jailers in the jail, two narcotics detectives that was in the jail when this person died and drugs got in. We can say very easily that drugs get in in every jail. That's not the fact. They're not in every jail. We can say that people are dying in other jails. Right now, people are dying in Jefferson County and Franklin County. Next question, uh, Chandavino. Uh, yes, you uh, kind of alerted, uh, alluded to this, Ms. Hopper, um, about the inmate that died from the suspected drug overdose in the jail last month. Where are the drugs coming in? How will you ensure that inmates do not have access to drugs within the facility? And how will you ensure that the addicted inmates get the necessary critical treatment that they need? Preventing drugs from coming in, that is a chore. Um, I understand that they have um, a, a body scan machine. I <clears throat> understand that just in the last couple of weeks, they'd ask um, one of the police departments to bring a dog in. At Bonnert Middle School, we bring a dog in quite often. Um, and we're in a confined space out there at the Franklin County Jail. So if you're monitoring who's coming in, and unfortunately, sometimes you have to stay, you have to say, you gotta be um, monitoring staff coming through. I just found out that there's a, a ride along program. So if you're gonna bring somebody in that's not employed by the Franklin County Regional Jail, let them work a shift and decide whether they wanna stay or not, that may not be a best practice. Um, so there are, <clears throat> there are so many ways you first have to look when they come through the door at what their what their charges are, what their past history is, and we've had a lot of. Sorry. Well, first of all, I'm going to start with responding to that. They are they go through a thorough background check before they start in a ride along program. You can't hear hearsay and bring it up, and knowing there was a death in the in the jail, knowing I can't talk about it because it's under a, an intensive investigation right now, where I believe there will be criminal charges coming. My opponent just said she knew when the jail when the drugs came in the jail. Please advise the public to help the investigation. Next question, Ms. Kathy Lindsay. How would you ensure that the medical program there in the jail is adequate to meet the needs of uh, the inmates? You want me to take that one first? Uh, yes, sir. We recently, in last October, signed a new contract with, with Western Kentucky Medical Institute. Um, 
they have been fantastic. The issue with Southern Health Partners, I won't talk bad about anybody. They were there at the jail for 19 years, but they had, we, we didn't agree on a contract for several reasons in that contract. But another reason, they was having a hard time finding staff to fulfill 24-hour medical, which our county was paying for. And point blank, I got tired of them missing shifts. So we hired Western Kentucky, and to this day, they haven't missed a shift. Matter of fact, three weeks ago, we had a, a night shift nurse call in sick. The doctor flew a nurse from Paducah here for a six-hour shift. That's incredible. So I'm very proud of Western Kentucky and the, the work they're doing. Can I follow up on that real quick? Yes, ma'am. Um, so with that service, does that service include um, uh, treatment for like if, if there's inmates who are addicted? Is, is there any kind of like recovery treatment included in that as well? We have different programs for that. We have okay. a partnership with UK um, Care Navigators that has a counselor or a navigator that has signed up 33 inmates since she started. Phenomenal work. Um, the recidivism rate will drop with that. I'm not sure if any of those inmates have come back that she's, she's put in, in programs. There's, we also have mental health at the jail that's provided through there. We also have dentistry that's provided, provided through there. Ms. Hopper, will you repeat the question? Sure, her, absolutely. Uh, how would you ensure that the medical program is adequate to treat the inmates there in the jail? Um, Jailer Bonta just said that he's has a, renewed a con he has signed a contract with someone new. That would have been the first um, and most important thing to do. Southern Health Partners name has shown up along with Franklin County Fiscal Court, Franklin County Regional Jail on um, lawsuits. That's something that needed to be addressed and I'm thankful that Fiscal Court finally addressed that situation and that they have signed <clears throat> the setup at the jail um, in, in my opinion, the medical staff is in the back of the um, jail near the kitchen unless that has been moved. Um, the location of medical staff needs to be in the booking area and there is an office that's right there in the booking area and it even has a uh, bathroom in it, I believe, in that office. It may be a lieutenant's office or something. But we need to move that up there so when law enforcement brings someone in, they can be triaged immediately. They're right up there in the PC area where unfortunately um, deaths ha have occurred. Uh, yeah, can I, so I'm just going to offer you a, another chance to follow up. So do you, after hearing uh, uh, Mr. Bonta's answer about the question about recovery programs, is there something more that you think needs to be done as far as uh, treatment for those who are addicted right. to drugs? Um, UK Healthcare has... Um, been partnering with several agencies, including the jail, pretrial services, during the pandemic. We need to make sure that we are making a constant effort to service these individuals with mental health and drug addiction. Drug addiction masks the mental health issues um, quite frequently. So I feel like having a clinician there on staff, someone used to, we would just call and do a comp care. Ms. Shady? Do I get a chance to follow up with that? Uh, we did that on your follow-up. You'll have a chance for closing remarks in just a few moments. Yeah. So my question is, if elected or re-elected, what steps would you take to ensure that the staff are properly trained to be able to handle anything that's going to come at them? That was to you, Ms. Hopper. <laughs> Um, training currently is uh, provided there at the jail. The Department of Corrections has opened back up at Shelby Campus um, at the University of Louisville a full um, training, uh, different, I, I think a little different um, from what they're doing at the jail now. I believe that it's very important with everything that uh, is entailed in being a correctional officer that they get the best type of training that they can get. Um, I'm not taking away from the uh, uh, whoever their training officer is at this point in time, but I feel like maybe we need a little more because he said it's changing. It changes all the time, week to week. So maybe what they're doing now is not working. I feel like the training needs to be out on the forefront and um, this is where we will keep these um, top-notch employees. Mr. Bonner? Absolutely. Training is always at the forefront. Our trainers are certified by DOC. 
there's a house bill they're looking at training to do an academy kind of like police and i've supported it from day one it's down the road though um, all our classes are are innovative and we're trying to make those even more innovative and thinking outside the box a little bit but we do follow DLC, dlc's guidelines we have to i mean when i started jail, i got a set of keys and said here good luck and it's came a long way since then i i wouldn't expect to put anybody through that so our training is is 80 hours to start and then it's 24 hours after that each year a follow-up training and i got a I think they're going to go to 40 hours real soon, which the more training, the better. The better off everybody in this community is. The more I can train my people and get them trained, even for me in training, it, it, I'm never too old to learn. So training, 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 absolutely. We have time for one more question. Is there a panelist with a burning desire? If not, I'm calling on you, Ms. Chendavino. Okay. Um, tell us about a time when you dealt calmly and effectively with a high-stress situation. That's you, Mr. Bond. Well, there's been several of those. The older I get, the more I learn to listen. And a lot of times when people come in that back door, they're mad. And if you'll just listen to them for a few minutes, you usually don't have to be physical with them. I don't like being physical with anybody anymore. I'm getting older. But I've learned through working at the jail prior, working on the streets for 14 years, working investigative cases, especially child abuse cases, you better learn how to listen to somebody. When you're talking, you're not hearing. So there's been numerous times at the jail when I've went over and talked to people with the mental health issue that we deal with now, you have to listen if you can get them to talk to you and just calmly talk to them and listen to them. It usually works out for the better. But mental health, when they come in at back door, they just don't understand. And you have to treat them that way. We try to treat people firmly, fairly, and consistently each and every day. I hope that answered your question, Ms. Vino. Yes. <clears throat> Would you mind to repeat that, Ms. Vino? Sure. Tell us about a time when you dealt calmly and effectively with a high stress situation. <clears throat> um, at the jail, um, we had an inmate that attempted, had attempted suicide. Um, there's a policy and procedures written on how we are to respond to that, what the action is to be taken. Um, this was, um, it was very high stress. The officers um, were able to uh, um, get a hold of the situation very quickly. I was the supervisor on duty that night. You know, we followed policy and procedure called an ambulance, notified the jailer, and um, took action to save the inmate. The inmate um, was saved that night, um, but following your policy and procedure is the most important thing. We've, time has come and, and gone, and we are now ready for closing remarks. We started with you, Ms. Hopper. We're gonna start with you, sure. Mr. Bonner. You have one minute. Uh, final words. I'll make it very quick. First of all, I'm going to start following up with the medical up front. We, since um, COVID has started, our medical staff goes to the Sally Port on every intake that comes in to be triaged. Has for two years now. So that's handled. I'm Jake Bonner. I'd like to remain your jailer for the next four years. I'm asking for your support with 21 years of experience and 1,300 plus hours of training. I'm not going to sit here and say I know everything that happens in that chair. I'm still learning day by day. I'm not perfect. But I am experienced through good times and bad times, and I'm going to run the jail with ethics and honesty and do the right thing no matter what. I ask for your vote, and I appreciate you all being here tonight and having this for us, too. Thank you all. Ms. Hopper, one minute. Closing remarks. Yes, I would uh, like to just follow up on uh, Mr. Bonta's um, comment about me ethically and 20 years experience. My 20 years experience has not been directly at the jail, but around the jail. In the newspaper, it never said that I, has, I have 20 years experience at the jail. None of nothing that I have on there does. I can tell you that I will <clears throat> work for Franklin County, I will give you 110% of everything that I have. I have ran for this office one other time, uh, two other times, and I intend on when I'm elected to s remain in that seat 
for four years. I will not pass this on to someone else. You know, a little um, social studies uh, here, a little civics lesson. This is a democracy that we live in. If you, if you give me your vote, I will stay the four years. I've as we close, I would like to personally thank all, both of you for seeking this office. You both have put your name on the ballot. Uh, you spent your own time and money, skipped out on family events to serve your community. And I want you to know that uh, from Franklin County, it's appreciated. You've both done a great job in this forum, uh, and I wish you the very best in this election. I'd like to take this opportunity, uh, opportunity to remind everyone of the election date, which is May 17th, 2022. There have been some election law changes statewide since the COVID pandemic. And if you don't know where to vote or how to vote, please call the Franklin County Clerk's Office at 502-875-8702 or check out their website. It's loaded with current election information. Voting is a right in this country provided by our Constitution, and I sincerely hope that you exercise your right. It's been an honor to serve as the MC for this event, and I'd like to thank all the folks that aren't on camera for all of your work. I'd like to thank the State Journal, Frankfurt Plant Board and the Frankfurt Area Chamber of Commerce for putting this on and uh, we've had a great evening and this concludes this forum. Thank you for joining us.